minutes. Thank you and welcome to the Tuesday, May 13, 2014, regular school board business meeting. Um, if you would please rise and join me in a pledge of allegiance. Uh, first of all, I just want to deliver the news that the town council voted last night 7 to 0 to pass the, the school department uh, budget on to the voters of the town of Cape Elizabeth. That referendum will be held on June 10th. Uh, and I want to thank uh, particularly the administrators who worked so hard on putting that budget forward. Um, who. Uh, the, the council went out of their way to cite uh, the work of the administrators in terms of presenting a clear uh, and well, uh, well um, organized and well presented budget, as well as the work of uh, the superintendent and uh, Michael Moore, the, the school board finance chair. So thank you all for that work. Uh, and that said, uh, I will move to item one. Are there any adjustments to tonight's agenda? No, seeing none. Uh, item two, the approval of school board minutes. May I please have a motion? I move we approve the minutes as listed in our packet number two, as listed executive session Tuesday, April 8th, 2014, regular business Tuesday, April 8th, 2014, and workshop Tuesday, April 29th, 2014. Is there a second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Okay, item three, comments from our student representatives, welcome. Hi everyone, um, so I just wanted to inform everyone that AP exams have been happening last week and this week, I actually had two today. Ooh, yikes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they've been a lot of fun and kind of the culminating event of a lot of classes. <laughs> um, Which exams did you have today? To uh, French and government. Wow. Uh, ooh, French was pretty rough, but <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, they've been a lot of fun and for especially seniors taking AP classes, it's been like, oh wow, this is the last thing that we're sort of doing. And I think for, for juniors as well, it's been kind of like a culminating thing and a very exciting thing. Um, and also in that sort of vein, the um, senior transition projects are going to happen uh, next week and the week after. And they're kind of a, an internship, like a job shadow sort of thing with um, members of kind of the, the greater Portland community and kind of getting as we trend as our seniors transition into uh, a different um, and after high school event um, kind of getting experience knowing what we want to do with the rest of our lives <laughs> again kind of a scary thing but uh, I'm very excited for my senior project and I think everybody is um, really looking forward to gaining more experience in the real world and some, some of that sort of stuff. And of course, we have our team recognitions for the, the math team, the speech team, which I was part of this year, and um, the, the ski team as well. And upcoming soon are the uh, Student Advisory Council elections. And I think that this year might be the largest pool of runners we've ever had. I think that we already have 12 people running for six positions in the freshman class and the announcement went out yesterday and so it's nice to see how involved everybody wants to be in the school we have prom this weekend which is everybody's kind of in the prom frenzy the prom happy vibe <laughs> and just an honorable mention to the mock trial team who traveled to nationals last weekend and they came in 31st and I was informed that they gave just some of the best performances they've ever given and it was just an extremely unfortunate outcome and they were shocked by it and also another honorable mention to the Ultimate Frisbee team for winning the uh, Regional Spirit Award. <coughs> I 
think that's so on the you know, ultimate team, not that I want to like beef this up at all, but can you tell a bit about the tournament this weekend? It was sort of a first um, for the region. It was a first for Maine. We hosted the, at, in South Portland, we hosted the Northeastern Championship for the entire country. There were 25 of the best teams there, and luckily both Cape Elizabeth teams were fortunate enough to attend. And our boys team, I think, came in 16th, and our girls team came in 12th. Well Could I add something to that on the mock draft team? Um, 31st was disappointing only because it was probably the best team I've ever seen assembled in the four or five years I've been doing it. Uh, 31st is still an excellent result given that all the states compete and multiple countries competed. They actually did extremely well and the scoring system out there is Byzantine at best, and the difference between someone who came in seventh and someone who came in 30th could be a function of having absolutely nothing to do with the merits. These were great kids. They worked really hard. Uh, there were two-a-day practices, if, and uh, they, they did extremely well by, I was told by Dick O'Meara, who was the head coach, who was there. They, they just did a superb job, and uh, I'm quite proud of them. Thank you. And thank you, David, for all the time you put in coaching that team. They may not like that. <laughs> um, all right, Thank, thanks to our student representatives for those comments. Uh, and on to item four. Do we have any po uh, comments from the public on items on our agenda tonight? No, seeing none. Uh, we will move on to item five, communications, and we'll begin with a recognition of our speech team. Recognizing Coach Melanson and Coach Mullen. Lisa's taking care of the uh, technology. you're going to see in a couple of seconds <clears throat> is our whole team, uh, including debaters, uh, numbering about uh, 50 uh, students at the high school uh, at a tournament. And we are very, very pleased with the participation, uh, with the hard work of our students, but also uh, for the appreciation that you offer us and for the support of the community in this important activity. So Lisa's going to say a couple of words. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for this opportunity for the recognition of our speech team. Uh, we have a few members here tonight in the audience. Uh, Emma Dwelly, Claire Zimmerman, Madison Young, Will Steidel, Ian Schrank, and Andrew Harrington. Andrew is our incoming captain for next year. Uh, and this is a photo taken at the State House uh, last month. Um, we were recognized in the Senate chamber, uh, Rebecca Millett, um, had a special commendation for us uh, during the session, so we appreciated that as well. As you can see, we're a big group. Uh, I think we had um, upwards of 25 from the team there that day. Um, so we're very pleased with the participation. We look forward to next year, and I guess I'll turn it over to Dick. And uh, this is Andrew Harrington. All right. So I'd say this year went very well with speech. Uh, we had a very large team. Um, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, everything went well despite the early morning bus rides were not very fun. Um, but throughout the year, as you're doing speech, you're not thinking about the, um, being recognized at the end. So this is a very great honor. So thank you very much. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Could the, could the students who are here from the speech team stand up so that, that uh, we could recognize who they are? Just one more note. I don't know if we mentioned it was the fourth straight uh, 
state championship, fifth, fifth, fifth excuse me, fifth straight uh, state championship, so, yes. Thank you. Next, I, we have the Honorable Rebecca Millett here, and, and the Honorable Kim, Kim monahang Derrick here to uh, present legislative sentiments. <laughs> a, num wow. a number of them. In, in pizza, it looks like. So, good evening, everyone. Um, yes, we have quite a, an abundance of legislative sentiments in recognition of, of achievements of the students of Cape Elizabeth school system. And we've been doing this all year long. This is, it's just a really astounding and breathtaking to think of all the amazing things that are happening in our schools and the wonderful programming that's made available to them and the support that they receive from the community and parents and teachers and administrators. Um, and so we will begin with the Cape Elizabeth High School chess team. So would they like to come up? So we have some very fancy speak up in uh, Augusta, and I would like to actually read it to you because I, I think it, it conveys the correct amount of seriousness that, that we want to share with you. Of course, I need my glasses. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing the members of the Cape Elizabeth High School chess team who won the Maine State Chess Championships for the third consecutive year. Matthew Fishbein, Matthew Riel Hatem, Wesley Parker, Colin Smith, Carter Brock, and reserve team members Nick Shedd, Danny Brett, Lily Jordan, and Roman Medina. The team won all four of its rounds, the only team in the tournament to do so. We extend our congratulations and best wishes to the members of the team on this achievement, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 126th legislature and the people of the state of Maine, given this 15th day of April 2014 in the state capital, Augusta, Maine, signed by President of the Senate, Justin Alfond, and Speaker of the House, Mark Eves, sponsored by myself and Representative Monaghan Derrick and Representative Heyman of South Portland. So congratulations. again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and our next um, sentiment, uh, before you, can I just, I just wanted to have a quick um, thank you to uh, Senator Millett. Senator Millett is really the one that really goes after um, compiling all these legislative sentiments and I really appreciate it. Um, she just gives me the word when to show up. <laughs> and uh, I do, but I promise I'll make it up to you next year, Rebecca. Okay, how's that? So our next one is, again, a chess player, a very successful chess player, one that we've all been following for quite a while, Matthew Fishbein. So Matt, why don't you come on up again, um, and we are going to send you your own recognition here. State of Maine, you can come stand right next to us, that's fine. Sure, yeah, so you can stand right next to us. Um, State of Maine, be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing Matthew Fishbein of Cape Elizabeth, a sophomore at Cape Elizabeth High School, who won his third Maine State Individual High School Open Chess Championship. Matthew is Maine's top rated chess player and was recently recognized as a national master. We extend our congratulations and best wishes to Matthew and his, on these achievements, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 126th legislature and the people of the state of Maine, given on this 15th day of April 2014 at the state capitol in Augusta, Maine. Signed, President of the Senate, Justin Alfon, Speaker of the House, Mark Eves, sponsored by Senator Millett, myself, and Representative Hammond 
of South Portland. Congratulations, Matthew. Thank you. We have one more. Unfortunately, I believe um, this recipient is not able to be with us this evening, but I still would like to read it for all of us to hear. And this is for Wesley Parker. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing Wesley Parker of Cape Elizabeth, who placed second in the Maine State Individual High School Open Chess Championship. We extend our congratulations and best wishes to Wesley on this achievement, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 126th Legislature and the people of the State of Maine. Given this 15th day of April 2014 at the State Capitol, Augusta, Maine, signed by the President of the Senate, Justin Elfond, Speaker of the House, Mark Eaves. I won't list all of us again, but so congratulations to Wesley. Um, and I just would like to say at this point, it was a pleasure to have the speech um, team come and join us up in Augusta. And um, I'm still waiting to receive my tips on public speaking. I think that uh, I certainly could benefit from it on the, the floor of the Senate chamber. So um, again, congratulations to all of you for your, your amazing achievement on the team. Yeah, I think a lot of state legislators could benefit from tips on speaking on the House and Senate floor. Uh, the next is uh, the Cape Elizabeth High School, Matthew, yes, thank you, Barring. thank you. So uh, would any members of the math team like to step up, please? Great t-shirts. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> we come right around here. If you, well, actually, that's fine because the camera's right there. Yes. <laughs> so, State of Maine, be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing the members of the Cape Elizabeth High School math team who won the state Class B math championship. We extend our congratulations to the team members on their achievement and send them our best wishes and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 126th legislature and the people of the state of Maine. Given this 12th day of May 2014 at the state capitol in Augusta, Maine, signed President of the Senate Justin Alphon, Speaker of the House Mark Eaves, and your faithful <laughs> members of the legislature. Congratulations. <laughs> tell you how many years ago I was uh, competing in some math competitions in high school and I, <clears throat> I suspect that probably we were working on slightly different problems back then so um, congratulations everyone okay so the girls alpine ski team do we have anyone from the alpine ski oh wonderful come on up And um, I will just say before reading this that as one who has children who ski and ski myself, um, I, it's um, probably one of the toughest uh, fan sports. <laughs> uh, the uh, number of hours that you spend standing outside in the cold, um, and not only just for fans but also the competitors. I know that they um, are oftentimes clad rather lightly for speed um, and are forced to stand at the top of the slope waiting for their chance to run down down the course, and um, this is a hearty group, I will tell you. So, be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing the members of the Cape Elizabeth High School Girls Alpine Ski Team, who won the Class B State Alpine Ski Championship. Sarah Packlett, I'm sorry, Sophie Hewitt, Abby McInerney, Emma Dvorzniak, Emma Land Landis, Caroline Packlett, Kinnan McGrath, Haley Fawcett, and Vicki So- oh, I practiced this and now I've- uh, Salantai? Okay. 
This is the first Class B State Alpine Ski Championship for the team. Six of the top nine racers were on the Cape Elizabeth team. We extend our congratulations and best wishes to the team on its achievement, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 126th Legislature and the people of the State of Maine, given this 25th day of March 2014 at the State Capitol, Augusta, Maine, signed by the President of the Senate, Justin Alphonse, and Speaker of the House, Mark Eves. Congratulations. Our last sentiment is going to uh, Zoe uh, Gillies, correct? And we are recognizing Zoe, uh, who is the recipient of the 2014 Prudential Spirit of Community of Distin uh, Distinguished Finalist Award. Hi, Zoe. State of Maine. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing Zoe Gillies of Cape Elizabeth, the recipient of the 2014 Prudential Spirit Community Distinguished Award for Exemplary Volunteer Service. This award, presented by Prudential Financial in partnership with the National Association of Secondary School Principals, honors young volunteers across America who have demonstrated extraordinary commitment to serving their communities. Zoe, a senior at Cape Elizabeth High School, founded Cape Closet, through which she collected and donated 125 prom dresses for local teens who could not afford to purchase their own. She earned a grant to expand her dress project to include body image workshops and mentoring programs, encouraged local schools to sponsor dress drives, worked with local sponsors who donated prom flowers, and coordinated with social workers to identify dress recipients. We congratulate Zoe on her receiving this award and thank her for her dedication to her community and state. And be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 126th Legislature and the people of the state of Maine. Given the 17th day of March 2014 at the state capitol in Augusta, Maine, signed by President of the Senate Justin Alphon, Speaker of the House Mark Eves, and Senator Millett and myself. And congratulations, Zoe. So that wraps it up for this evening. We will be back because we have more that are being printed as we speak for the next meeting in June. And, so, and thank you all for your service to the town of Cape Elizabeth as school board members. I know how challenging your job is. Um, I do know. So thank you again. And thank you both wow. for being here. We have, we have one more, but before I get to that, I just uh, want to congratulate all of you who are, who are here tonight. Um, as school board members, we, we are privileged with um, constructive criticism from the community around our schools <laughs> uh, on a regular basis. And sometimes we're told that our schools focus um, too much on, on academics and, and um, you know, to those, to those folks here tonight, we have, um, we have Zoe, for example, and we have uh, the chess team, and um, sometimes people tell us uh, that our schools are focused too much on athletics, um, and for those folks, we have the math team, and and um, so and and we have this and we have the speech team, and so I'm just struck with the with the, with the wide range of of t talent um, that you all represent, and and uh, want to thank you for for the hard work that you've done to develop those talents and congratulate you.
Uh, and we have one more um, uh, recognition tonight um, for our student representatives to the school board. Um, Sierra Bates and Tim Hartel have, have volunteered to spend their Tuesday evenings uh, with the school board. Uh, they have been extremely valuable in terms of the, the insight that they've been able to give members of the board around issues of concern to students. Um, we've turned to them uh, in particular around sensitive uh, policies. Uh, this year we spent a lot of time on the, on the, on the policy related to, to substances and um, input from students is, is very important to the board and, and Tim and Sierra have been uh, invaluable to us in terms of um, the time that they've given to the board and, and their service. So um, we have a we have a special recognition for them. Sent forthwith from the school board, <laughs> school district of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, and so uh, we move on um, to item 5B, uh, resignations. Um, and sometimes when we move on, people take the opportunity to get on to the rest of their evening. And if <laughs> that's something anybody likes to do, wanted to do, would give you a moment to do so. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Congratulations, all of you. So cool. Yeah, and I'm stuck. Okay, so it's frozen. on to item 5B, resignations. Yes. So as that hush sort of falls over our room, it seems to have emptied out considerably. Um, we've received a resignation from our high school assistant principal, Troy Henninger. Um, Troy is moving on to Harvard, um, where he's accepted the position of the associate director of the um, principal's um, institute there. So we wish him well in that next step, and um, we are in the process of looking for someone to fill those shoes at the high school. So we'll, we'll keep you informed about that, and um, we'll bring forward a nomination as soon as we have a great candidate. Thank you for that, and congratulations to, to Troy on what sounds like an exciting new chapter. Yes, definitely. Uh, and then on to item C, the superintendent's report. Okay. So, um, Chairman Christie's already mentioned the budget approval. So just as a reminder, the referendum um, for both the school budget and the budget for the town of Cape Elizabeth will be held on June 10th. School report cards are expected to be released later this week um, by the state, and so those will become um, publicly available sometime Thursday or Friday, is my understanding. So um, certainly once those become available, um, people will be able to access those reports fully on both the state um, data warehouse site as well as um, we'll post them to our website as well. Um, I have a number of Latin awards, so I want to just read the name, the Note here from um, Mort Sol, our Latin teacher. Is it in Latin? It is, well, fortunately not. Um, there are some pieces that are in Latin, but I'm going to read the part that's in English. 20 students from two sections of first year Latin took the National Latin Exam, a 40 question test on grammar, idioms, history, culture, etc. Please, that was Latin. Please note the results of 18 students who scored above the national average. Um, so again, we had a number of students who received either gold summa cum laude awards, silver maxima cum laude awards, or magna cum laude awards. Um, and I'll just briefly read down those names. But Elijah Babcock, Nathaniel Jordan, Eamon Kelly, Harry Queenie, James Plansek, Catherine Zajowski, sorry, Catherine, Zajkowski, thank you. Uh, Michaela Cohan, Emily Lynch, Emma Landis, Ethan Dupair, Acacia Fitz, Log. Logan Hansen, I think. 
Declan McCormick, Julian Brandmeier, Anthony DeMarco, Owen Doherty, McCarthy Hufford, and Thomas Rio. So congratulations to those students on that accomplishment. Our special education department received um, its notification from the state that it had met all requirements, um, which is the highest score you can receive from the State Department of Education. So that's for the 12-13 school year. Those data reports tend to lag a bit behind in terms of the accountability piece, but congratulations to um, Jane Golding and the special educators here for their work in uh, making sure that we are compliant with all of the state regulations. Summer professional development opportunities. Um, notice of those were sent out to our teachers um, this past week and curriculum pieces and building work plans are also being put into place. So we'll share more with you in September about the outcomes of all of those pieces, but please know that that work is underway. It's reaching the time when all the end of year events are beginning to occur. Um, there's a concert at the middle school tonight and another one tomorrow night. Next week, we have the all school choral concert on Tuesday. The sophomore research night, I believe is Tuesday also, Jeff? Or is that Wednesday? I may have that backwards. Sorry, Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday night, which is the same night as the undergraduate awards at the high school, which begin at seven. The following week, and um, Mr. Mullen has left us, but the spring theater production is the 30th and the 31st of May. Our senior transition projects will wrap up and those presentations are scheduled for the 2nd and 3rd of June. We've got the high school band and chorus concert also scheduled for June 3rd and graduation will be June 8th. And I'm not naming the dates that happen after our next school board meeting because that's another full list to um, address. Um, some news from Pond Cove. They held um, on May 2nd the Pond Cove Parents Association sponsored Pond Cove Arts Day. Um, with 28 volunteer artisans and arts organizations providing experiences for the K-4 students, which finished with a performance by the Jim Dandies, who are student acrobats from um, Scarborough schools. Last week was Teacher and Staff Appreciation Week, and there was an Italian bistro luncheon held at the Cape Elizabeth Fire Station, again sponsored by um, Parents Association at the fire station last Friday. First and second grade music concerts were last week as well. Um, nice crowd in the auditoriums and we had some guest um, drummers from the third and fourth grade as well so congratulations to Becky Bean and those first and second graders and thanks to their teachers for being there those evenings as well. The Cape Challenge 5k is coming up on Sunday June 1st which is sponsored by the Tri Parents Associations and field days at Pond Cove will begin um, or the week of June 2nd through the 5th. That's, that's my report in a nutshell for today. Thank you very much for that. Uh, moving on to item six, uh, new business. Um, and 6A, the consideration to appoint new representatives to the Community Services Advisory Commission. May I have a motion? Um, I move that we appoint representatives to the Sur Community Services Advisory Commission, in particular, Deborah Butterworth. Her term is 2013 through 2015 and Sarah McCall, whose term is 2014 through 2016. Is there a second? Second motion. And is there any discussion? Just to point out, these are the remaining vacancies, to the best of my knowledge, on this board. Joe, you're nodding as the liaison, so that's helpful. Absolutely. Um, so this will give us a full slate, at least through the end of this calendar year. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right, thank you. Thank you to Deb Butterworth and Sarah McCall for, for volunteering their services. To I have neglected services. to mention that as a liaison to the committee, I can tell you the two of them together are, are fantastic additions. They add a breadth of knowledge of the services that the community services um, offers, as well as the um, user and venue as far as understanding the needs. You didn't want to say that before the vote? No, because I knew it was fait accompli, but I just thought that should be thrown in. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, on to 6B. Uh, may I have a motion? I move we approve the superintendent's nominations of the following personnel to third year probationary contracts. At Pond Cove, Sarah Adams, Faith Barnes, Karen Ferry. At the middle school, Kristen Arbor. At the high school, Sarah Harrington, Eamon Keenan, Joanne Lee, Andrew Lupian, 
Joyce Nato, Lauren Tarantino. In the instructional support, Jeffrey Davis, Lisa Lund, and Aaron Nelson. Is there a second? Uh, is there any discussion? So I can just point out, um, as I've shared with the board, that all of these folks go through, this is their, they're moving into their third year probationary contract, which means for the last two years, they've had uh, multiple observations by their direct supervisors or building administrator um, to look at their performance, to review their overall um, instructional work, their affect um, with students, parents, their relationships with colleagues, and to determine whether or not they're a good, a good fit for the school system. So all of these folks have been re recommended by their building administrators um, as well to me. Um, and my job is to review all of those evaluations and um, make a determination whether or not to move them on to you. And for the benefit of the, of the public, for our part, we, we, we whenever there are personnel nominations, we meet in executive session in order to discuss anything that that is confidential because it's personnel related and that gives the board to ask questions of those of those of that sort um, and uh, we had that meeting prior to this meeting could I add something to that John just so the public knows so we get a substantial amount of information at this meeting in terms of uh, detailed questionnaires uh, information prepared by building administrators on, on this and the other ones that we had talked about, we, we get a lot of information. It isn't, our subsequent vote can't reflect that as a matter of law, but we, we do a substantial independent review of this information. We're not simply potted plants. Thank you, David. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Item 6C, may I have a motion? I move we approve the superintendent's nominations of the following personnel to second year probationary contracts at Pong Cove School, Thomas Charltre, Aaron Taylor, and Catherine Whipple. At the high school, Deborah Braxton, Jana Dewan, Candace O'Brien, Jonathan Werner, and Carolyn Young. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? I won't reiterate what I said previously. These are folks who have just completed their first year in the school district um, and through that observation and evaluation process are being recommended to continue for a second year. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Item 6D, may I have a motion? I move that we approve um, Daniel Peacock as the middle school, seventh grade baseball extracurricular staff person. Is there a second? Michael? Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Item 6E, may I have a motion? I move that we approve the following personnel, new personnel for the 2014-2015 school year. Scott Wyman as school business manager and municipal comptroller. Linda Vu as middle school nurse. Nicole Carrera as high school health teacher. Angela Taylor as high school study, social studies teacher. Elizabeth Yarrington as high school English teacher, and Kirsten Donovan as high school science teacher. Is there a second? A second. And is there any discussion? David? A question I forgot to ask, and I mean, are, are these uh, uh, being signed with a probationary contract, or are they become, they are probationary? All of these folks will be considered first year probationary employees with the school and district. For the three year probationary period, so each year they have to be renewed for three years? That is correct. Is that the same with Scott Wyman um, because he works with the town hall as well? Um, Scott is on a one year at a time contract. Okay. 
um, the business administrator position is not covered any, un, under any collective bargaining agreement and has no special entitlement under state law. So that position is a year at a time. Right. Thank you. May I just speak briefly to the hiring Please. process? So um, again, all of these folks are subject to panel interviews, including um, building level administrators in the case of teaching folks, as well as um, teachers in some, um, in some cases. Um, but like most of these folks, we're all subject to interviews with people within their department, but as, in some of these positions also include folks from outside their department due to the nature of the positions. We have, um, after that process, references are checked. Um, building administrators then make recommendations to me. I have interviews with these folks as well. Many of these folks have been through multiple rounds of interviews with their um, departments and building administrators, and then they, we move them on to you when we feel that um, we have a strong candidate to recommend. In the case of the business administrator position, that Com the com that committee composition included um, school board member, it includes um, folks from um, other departments and, and schools as well as the town side because that position also supervises the finance for the town. So that recommend, that specific, specifically the business manager recommendation is being brought forward uh, with the support of the town manager? That is correct. Okay. I assume the town council will have to vote on that as well, or is that it's No, the position employee? is employed by the school department, and um, it's part I, of the one town concept. And I'm the direct supervisor, but yes, they oversee both sides, as our facilities director and technology coordinator positions do. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor. Okay, item. 6F. I move that we authorize and direct the superintendent pursuant to, pursuant to 20A MRSA subsections 1486 section 2 and 2307 to deliver to the town clerk for displaying at all polling places the completed notice of amounts adopted at town council meeting for voters at school budget validation referendum. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I thought it was very exciting last night that the town council voted um, seven to zero. Um, all in favor for this. And um, it was a great show, as you said earlier, it was just a great show of um, the hard work that everybody does. And Michael, I know you've, uh, your head is down, but thank you very much. I'm doing much. numbers right now. <laughs> <laughs> You just Thank can't you stop. Much. You can stop now. <laughs> and I have to say to all the other members, or to the other members who questioned Michael uh, repeatedly um, for your continued work um, with positive attitude through all the, it, amount, uh, the amount of work is incredible, Meredith, um, Michael, John, and everybody else who played a part. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Ms. David? If you're going to say, so I, I think it would be worthwhile for you to say on the record sort of the content of the email you sent us. It was um, in terms of the town council's response to the presentation by Michael and Meredith and the other people. I, I think it would be worthwhile for the public to hear it. Uh, uh, I, I, so I, said, I said something briefly at the beginning of the meeting, but I, uh, I appreciated um, the town council last night having recognized the efforts of um, uh, school administrators, the, the building principals in particular, uh, and the superintendent in terms of putting forward a, a, a budget narratives that were uh, thoughtful uh, and clear uh, and easy to understand um, uh, and that were based in uh, the long-term planning uh, that the school district has done, uh, uh, both around capital improvement in terms of the 10-year capital improvement plan and in terms of uh, student achievement in terms of the five-year strategic plan. Um, uh, and uh, the town council members also s spoke to the clarity of uh, Michael Moore's presentation to them uh, in terms of uh, the the um, the overall the big the big picture of the budget, um, and and so that that was what I was trying to communicate um, was my my gratitude toward uh, toward administrators and 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 Michael um, in terms of uh, the work that was done to. to 
present the budget, uh, to, to develop and present the budget. Is that, is that what I said? Very good job, almost like you wrote the first time. Um, I, I also think it's worthwhile to note for the record, having been here five years, this was a very complicated budget and we are finally presenting a budget in the last couple of years, budgets in this one in particular, that is not only extremely understandable and a word I hate, transparent, it also aligns the amounts that we're spending with our, with our strategic goals and it's online for anybody that wants to read it and it's extremely relatively readable. Um, and I, I think that's a, compared to where we were five years ago, this is a massive improvement. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Item seven, committee reports. Do we have committee chair, chairs who would like to report to the board? Um, as the policy committee chair, I can tell you that we do continue to work on and deeply think through our substance abuse um, policies, um, ADC, use of tobacco products, JICH, student alcohol, drug, and tobacco use, JICHR, which are the procedures on how to enforce that, as well as the co-curricular and extracurricular activities eligibilities and the code of conducts that are sort of all tied together. Um, as it has been said many times, these are probably some of the most often referenced and used, and we want to just do our best to make sure that we do what's right for both the district and our kids. So we're going to take another whack at it at an upcoming meeting, and I don't want to jump on the agenda, but we can talk about the timing for that next meeting. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Are there any other uh, committee chairs who would like to report to the board? No. Yes? Well, I think it's important to talk about the teacher evaluation committee, although um, because the law is changing, and I'd love you to review the law, Meredith, as of we skipped the meeting uh, two weeks ago because the law was in flux and um, it's back on for tomorrow. And Meredith, if you'd review what the Legislature sure. has decided. I mean, part of the confusion and part of the reason we postponed the meeting was because there were some legislative changes to um, structure of forming a committee, and so that was a piece that needed to be clear before we could move forward with um, actually more moving the committee forward to do the work. You had to be sure of, of, of the committee. So um, we'll, be, be, we'll be continuing that work. Essentially, it's going to require a vote of the faculty to say whether or not it's comfortable continuing with the committee that has already begun this work. Um, and we'll, we'll go forward from there. If not, we may be developing a new committee, but we're moving forward with um, the committee as, as planned right now and, and starting to tackle some of the larger work. The other substantive change that was made to the evaluation rule by the legislature is around um, the teacher effectiveness piece and what, what components can be utilized to determine teacher effectiveness. The original um, rules de developed by the Department of Education called for at least 20% of a teacher's effectiveness to be based on um, reliable um, measures to include some sort of student assessment data. And that has changed to sort of say that it's up to a local district to determine um, what component, what measure um, that should play, or what role that should play in determining teacher effectiveness. So. That's part of the work that we have moving forward. We will meet tomorrow. We have um, also all of next year, really, to finalize the development of the system. And if you'll recall, part of the pressure we were under previously was that we were supposed to be piloting the system next year, having a, an approved pilot, um, a pilot approved by the Department of Education this spring and being ready to launch a pilot in the fall. And that was very difficult as the rules hadn't been adopted. So um, the legislature did recognize that that was a challenge and um, we have now some time to really iron out the system and develop something that, that makes sense for Cape Elizabeth's teachers and, and administrators. And um, administrative evaluation is also a part of this piece, principal evaluation. Huge. 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 The only other committee I would mention is that negotiations has met and is scheduled to meet and we'll, we can do the dates at the upcoming meetings part. Don't rush ahead. It's ongoing. I don't mean to. <laughs> yes. Okay. I will, I will, I will do that. Um, okay. Are there any other committee reports? Um, let me just say that the Thomas Memorial Library that um, 
Jeff and Kelly and myself are part of um, meet every two weeks, basically. Every two weeks. It's on the, we have a website now. So if anyone has interest and um, insight or bring anything up about the Thomas Morrill Library, how it works in the town with schools and just as the town, um, all information is, um, we're open to all information to and the working website. with the architects. The website address is a please go to Thomas Memorial Library and then get connected to the website address because it does not make sense, the website address <laughs> right now. It's not an easy address to give out. Um, but you can get to the link through the town website or this website. Cool. And um, people are, um, if anyone wants to march in the Memorial Day Parade on behalf of the library with your children, um, please get in contact with us. Thank you. Thank you, Kay, for your service on that committee. I know, I know the library building committee has put in an extraordinary amount of work. We appreciate your service there. All right. Uh, moving on to item eight, school board meeting agenda requests. The members of the public may petition the school board chair or the superintendent for inclusion of issues on the school board agenda. But this is the opportunity for school board members to request uh, that items be added to future school board meeting agendas. Are there any such items? See, okay, seeing none. Yep. Boom. I will note this is not a school board member request, but I think the town council last night indicated that they would be asking the Thomas Memorial Library Building Committee to make a request to share some information with the school board at an upcoming meeting. That's right. right. In a more formal way right. than what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, then item nine, announcements of upcoming meetings. Uh, as you pointed out, the negotiations committee will meet on the 15th and on the 19th, 19th uh, with the members of the, the uh, Cape Elizabeth Education Association. Yes. Other <coughs> upcoming meetings? So we had tried to sneak in another meeting um, for the policy committee so that we could put the policies that I had mentioned earlier around substance abuse and code of conduct um, on our next June agenda item for our first read. However, there's been some snafus with those who um, in the committee. So um, we are not meeting on the 19th, but we'll come up with a magic mutual date sometime that week, hopefully. Would you like me to send out a calendar request with some options? That would be awesome. Be glad. I wish you had said that last night. I wouldn't have spent three hours yesterday and four hours today making a green line version of that. But well, now your work is done. That's true. But have you sent it to the committee for review? It's being sent. Are there any other upcoming meetings tomorrow. to announce? I did want to actually add, because David reminded me that <coughs> Because the work through these policies is so dense and so thought-provoking that if anyone does have some comments, um, we could be more productive during meeting time if we shared comments and feedback beforehand so that we could get right to the heart of the matter during our meeting time. So um, uh, at least a day or two before the meeting would be nice, maybe by Monday, so that whatever our meeting time is during the next week, we can have some time to review one another's feedback. Okay. Thank you. Two others? Yes. The school board has a workshop um, scheduled for the 27th of May, which will be to discuss the strategic plan. And Joe, the date for the next Community Services Advisory Commission meeting? OK. Thank you. I thought I had it on my calendar. I thought I now. did, too. OK. Um, can you tell me the time and place of that 27th meeting? That's the high, that's the regular. May 27th school board workshop. I, I'm sorry, I cannot handle three voices at once. May 27th, the high school library. Time? It's our 6.30. Thank you. Yep. OK, on to item 10. May I have a motion? I move we adjourn. I second. All those in favor? 